In this series, I'm going to show you how to build your very own automated trading bot using MetaTrader. If you're anything like me, building your own automated algorithmic trading bot in a programming language sounds like an incredibly intimidating experience. If that's you, don't worry. I've got everything that you need in this series to get you right into it. Let's start by talking about what you need to be able to complete this series. So first of all, you need Windows 10. Now, this may work on Windows 11 if that's what you're running. I just haven't tested it personally, so I can only guarantee that it works on Windows 10. The second thing you need is Python 3.10. Now, for those of you who are out there, you'll know that Python 3.11 is already out. Unfortunately, the MetaTrader 5 Python library doesn't work on Python 3.11 at the time of I made this video. The next thing that you're going to need is an integrated development environment. Now, I know lots of people out there like to use Visual Studio Code, also known as VS Code. It's a great free tool and plenty of people love it. Me personally, I like to use PyCharm. They've got a great free community edition and I love the code completion on it, but I've linked to both in the description below. You're also going to need to have a MetaTrader 5 download from your broker. Now I use IC Markets uh, and they give you a copy of it and I'll get into a little bit later in the series why that's important. And finally, you need a trading account. Now I'd highly recommend that you use a practice account for this. Don't use your real money to get started, but that's completely up to you. All right, let's get into the code. Our first piece of code is building main.py. And main.py is kind of like the main function of our Python code. And what it does is it allows us to basically push play if you're using the PyCharm IDE and play the code that we're building. It makes it really, really easy to build your code and just keep iterating through it and making it better. So let's get into how I go about building that specific set of keywords that we use uh, in the main function in Python. You can see there that I created a file called main.py. And at the next thing I'm putting in there is if underscore name underscore underscore equals main in, with the double underscores again, we're going to print a statement, which is, you know, let's build an awesome trading bot. Let's push play and see what happens next. How good is that? So basically, we've been able to print a statement to the screen, and we're going to keep using that way of doing things for the rest of this series. All right. The next thing that we're going to be doing is starting to build our set settings <clears throat> file. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can import sensitive information uh, into your file, uh, into your program, rather. It's really critical that you understand what they are and how to use them. Now, the way that I'm going to use it is by using a settings.json file. What that does is it stores your sensitive information on your hard drive somewhere. And when your program needs to use it, it effectively reads that file into memory and starts to use those sensitive pieces of information from there. Now, what this means is you don't actually have to put your username and password into the actual program itself. And that's really important from a security perspective, particularly if you're looking to upload your code to a code repository such as GitHub. So let's have a look at what I'm doing here. So first of all, I put in the username. That's important for logging into your MetaTrader account. Then we have our password. I haven't put my password on there for obvious reasons, but typically that'll just be a, a length of characters and numbers called a string uh, that kind of identifies it. Now, really unique kind of piece of information that you need from MetaTrader is your server and your broker will actually do that. Now, normally they'll like denote it uh, in terms of whether it's a trading account or whether it's a testing account. For instance, my one uh, when I'm using testing is IC markets dash demo. When I'm using a live account, it might be IC markets dash live dash, you know, server one or server two. The next thing we have is our MT5 um, file location of terminal64.exe. Like I said, I'll explain a little bit later in a future episode why that's important and how MetaTrader goes about getting the prices for you to access. But for now, just understand that there is going to be a file location after you install MetaTrader that allows you to kind of locate that terminal64. 
Then we're going to put in what symbols we're going to trade. I've chosen to do USDJPY.A, and then we're going to talk about our time frames, uh, which is for now going to be the M30. Now, quick little fun fact: uh, every tr uh, broker has a different way of denoting their symbol. So USDJPY.A is a raw account from IC Markets. So just stay on top of that and make sure that yours are the same. Okay. So we've created our example settings uh, file and that'll turn into our settings.json file. So let's talk about how we're going to import this uh, into our code so that the rest of our program can actually use it. So you can see there what I'm starting to type out is I've imported JSON, which is important for reading JSON files in Python. And I've imported OS, which is a library that allows us to kind of locate files. And it's a very Pythonic way of doing things. It's designed that way so that you can use it on any operating system and you're going to get the same result. Okay, so now I've defined get project settings. And like I do with all of my functions, I always put the little comments there to tell me what it is, what are the parameters, what they are, and how I go about using them. That's kind of important for your code. Uh, everyone has a slightly different way of doing it, but commenting your code means that you know when you come back to this in three months time, because you've got a brilliant new idea, you understand what you did, why you made the decisions you made, and you can kind of walk yourself uh, kind of through it. I've wasted so much time when I haven't commented code because I've had to go back and figure it out. The next step that I've put in there is starting to figure out and put in a little bit of a test to understand if the path actually exists. Now, the reason this is important is because if you put in a file that doesn't exist on there and you don't handle that error, your code is going to fail. You're going to get some weird error that prints out onto the screen that takes you hours to figure out. Whereas if you just take a couple of minutes just to put in that little um, function I put in there, if os.path.exists, your file, uh, then you know go ahead and do it. And at the end of this little function, I'm going to put an else statement that says, otherwise, tell me that it doesn't exist there. That way you'll know exactly what the problem is and how to go about fixing it. Next thing we do is we put in you know, our open statement, f equals open. That's just a standard file open uh, way of doing things. It creates a file handle to the file. We load using the JSON library, the project settings. And as you can see there, I go ahead and I put in that we're going to close the file. The reason that's important is because if you don't close the file and you keep reading from it, every time you read from it, it creates an open file handle. And particularly in uh, low specification systems, if you open too many file handles all at once, it really just causes problems with your operating system. So a really simple thing to do to get around that is to just put in a file close at the, once you've finished with it. The project settings are in memory. You don't need the file anymore, so you can close it. And there you can see I've just put in the little thing that says, if the file doesn't exist, tell me, raise an error. All right, now that that function's finished, we're going to go ahead and start figuring out how to actually get that information into our program. All right, so you can see here, little comment, set up the import file path. Now I've chosen for my import file path to put it as a variable that lives kind of in that main.py. That allows me to kind of change it so I can put the file anywhere on the file system. For this tutorial and for most of my tutorials, I typically put it in the same uh, folder as the rest of the project. That just allows me to keep all of the different settings together. Other people might do things like they'll have a certain place on their hard drive, maybe in their documents file, which has all of their settings, and I'll just name every single one differently. The great thing about this method of, that I've uh, approached it with is that you can use whatever works for you. Um, as long as you declare it at the top of that file that your settings.json lives here, the rest of the program uh, will be fine. You can see there, I've tried to import it and it doesn't exist. Why might that be? Well, 
stand by for a couple of minutes while I put in my sensitive settings and then I'll come back. All right, let's finish this off. So in that quick little break I took, I imported my settings.json. That's got my sensitive information in there. So like my username and password for my version of MT5. Now we're gonna quickly update our file and we're basically, we'll have finished importing our settings. How good is that? So you can see here, I'm just gonna call out a specific area in there. I'm gonna pull out my server. I put a fake server name in there just for now, uh, just to kind of prove my point. And then just below it, I'm actually just gonna put another one just to kind of demonstrate what happens when the error handling is work. So first of all, I've pulled it out. It's good, we can see it. We're all happy and you know we've securely imported it. Now, just to test that the error handling works, let's finish it off. All right, settings2.json does not exist on my file system. When we try to print it out, or even when we try to call it, it's gonna throw the same error as before. And there you have it, through an error. How good. All right, just to close it off, I'm just gonna finish that off. And that is how you... In the next episode, I'll show you everything you need to connect to MetaTrader. In the next episode, I'll show you everything...